Every single day, we're faced with hundreds and hundreds of decisions that we have to make. These decisions can be as important as whether or not to buy a new house, or they can be as simple as whether or as what route to take to work. When faced with important decisions, people will commonly spend a good amount of time analyzing the problem and come up with a good solution. For quicker, less simple, less complicated decisions, people will often go with their gut. Now, how do they know that these gut decisions are correct? Without any kind of analysis, there's no way to know. Today, I'm going to borrow from the world of finance and show you a better way to make these quick decisions. Expected return is a concept that is commonly used in the investment industry when selecting investments. All it is is a simple calculation that takes into account all of the possible returns that the investment can have and weights them by the probability of those returns occur. In our example here, we can see that an analyst has determined that stock ABC has a 60% chance of going up 5% next year and a 40% chance of going down by 10% next year. By plugging these inputs into our expected return calculation, we can see that the expected return is negative 1%. This is not an investment that we'd, we would want to invest in. This doesn't mean that the stock will go down by negative 1% every single year, but it does give us a long run expectation for the average return of the investment. So how can we use this in our everyday decision making process? It's a lot simpler than it sounds, and I'll give you a couple quick examples to show you. Say that you're deciding what route you want to take to work. You have two options. The first option is a long route, which takes 20 minutes to drive. But that 20 minutes is the same every single day. Then you have another option, which is shorter, and it only takes you 15 minutes. But every once in a while, there'll be bad traffic, and it'll end up, to end up taking you 30 minutes to make the drive. Now, how do you know which option is better? By using expected return, it becomes a simple answer, a question to answer. So we're going to use the assumption that traffic will be, be bad one out of every five workdays. So by using that 20% probability and inputting it into our expected return calculation, we can compute that the expected transit time of the short route is only 18 minutes, two minutes shorter than the known transit time of a long route of 20 minutes. So by using expected return calculations, we can find that by using the shorter route, we'll save two minutes on average every single day out of, out of our transit time. Another example where expected return is useful is when you're buying a new big ticket item, like a new computer or a new car um, or new appliance. Often when buying these, something like this, the salesman will be telling you that if you don't buy the product replacement plan, you're out of your mind. Now, is he giving you good advice or is he just trying to add a little commission to his check? Using expected return, we can be a lot more confident in our answer. By rearranging the formula and using the known price of the product replacement plan, we can find the probability that equates the cost of the plan and the expected cost of replacing the product given that it breaks and we didn't buy the plan. If this probability is of it breaking is higher than you expect given, the pro given the whatever product you're buying, then, then you know that you're better off not buying the plan and it's an acceptable risk to take on. So these are just two very quick examples to show you how using expected return in your everyday life can benefit your short-term decision making. So now I challenge you, next time you have a snap decision, don't just go with your gut. Spend a little bit more time analyzing the problem and you'll be better off in the long run.